So here we have the 4070 Ti, and then here we have a 3090. I got a lot of comments in my video that I posted. The 4070 Ti has a serious VRAM limitation. It's not only 12 gigabytes of VRAM, extraordinarily unplayable. You would have to, of course, not put it on Ultra. It's also the memory bus at only 192 bits. The bandwidth of the GPU is a huge problem. You're not going to see this as much at 1440p. And yes, we're talking about ray tracing and ultra. These are the type of settings you should be able to do on a GPU that's over $800. So if you don't agree with that, it's fine. But at 4K is where we're really going to see if we can find the limits to this GPU. I'm going to give you guys a spoiler alert. You're going to see that people wrote all these comments. They asked for proof. They said I should have we should test it i should see exactly what's going on but i had tested it before i knew the 4070 ti absolutely had issues i'm going to prove it to you today i'm going to show you with the same system a 3090 and the 4070 ti you're going to be shocked at the results that i found between the 3090 and the 4070 ti i think you may consider that the 4070 Ti is already obsolete for 4K if you want to play AAA games with ray tracing, and I'm going to prove it to you. And then here, we're definitely starting to get a little bit of choppy performance too, a little bit of uh, some frame drops, but this is 1440p. Imagine this at 4K. You're going to have a lot tougher a time. So this is Hogwarts on the 4070 Ti at 4K. Take a look at the VRAM allocation. Very close to 12 already, and the actual usage close to 11. And at 4K, ooh, look at these stutters. I mean, it goes down to like 17 to 20 FPS. So this is the RTX 3090, and I'm gonna show you the settings. This is gonna be at 4K, DLAA, no super sampling, no DLSS or anything like that. Everything on ultra, even ray tracing, just like the 4070 Ti in the other test. And now let's walk around the same area and we're getting over 30 frames per second. You remember the 4070 Ti was having some really, really nasty dips below like 10 frames per second. It was doing considerably worse. Look at the VRAM allocation, 12,795. That's way over the limit that would be on the 4070 Ti. And the actual VRAM usage is over 11,000. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, vip-cdkdeals.com, a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You wanna go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. Look at that VRAM allocation going over 13,000. That shows you at 4K, 4070 Ti is not enough. Not only that, the 3090 is performing much smoother. I don't care that the FPS may be technically lower than the 4070 Ti. Wow. I mean, the VRAM keeps going up as well, the allocation and the usage. But look at this. This is not a trickery of the camera. This is actually how it looks like. It's the mo It feels like it's going at literally 10 frames per second. That is crazy. Of course, this is going to be with Ultra, Ray Tracing Ultra. There's no DLSS. It's performing smoother because the 4070 Ti is 192-bit memory bus. It doesn't have the bandwidth to push all those graphical niceties through, but the 3090 is doing a much better job. Even with a much less sort of FPS, it's not dipping like crazy like the 4070 Ti was. The 4070 Ti was going down to like 10 or 8, completely unplayable. But look at this, this is staying very, very stable. I mean, it's still 30 frames per second, so it's not ideal. But look at that, it's going for the actual VRAM usage. We're about to hit 12 gigabytes. Extraordinarily unplayable. You would have to, of course, not put it on Ultra. But the point is, it's a 4070 Ti, $800 plus GPU. You should be able to put it on Ultra. What could be going on here, obviously, uh, the VRAM, the 192-bit bus, I'm sure it's playing a role in that you know, bottlenecking the performance of this VRAM. Then remember, the 3090 just has a much faster memory bit bus than the 4070 Ti, and that's making all the difference. That shows you that the 4070 Ti is basically a little bit obsolete. You can't play it at 4K, and 4K may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for a high-end GPU, it's definitely starting to push it, and even at 1440p, you start to see some issues. This is proof the 3090 Ti at 4K, in some games like this, it's gonna be much better than the 4070 Ti. 
Remember all those huge frame dips? Exact same settings, same system. Look at that. And look at the VRAM allocation. 13,000, almost 14,000. And the VRAM usage, over 12,000. The 4070 Ti would be absolutely done by now. And this is like, it's not high FPS, but it's smooth. It's not choppy like the 4070 Ti was. That's the biggest proof there. And it's the same game, if you think Hogwarts is optimized or not, it's performing well on the 3090, even with the low FPS. So that proves that it's a limit of the 4070 Ti's VRAM. <clears throat> and then you could argue, okay, you're not supposed to play at 4K with the 4070 Ti, etc. But it's an $800 GPU, people will play at 4K, and you should be able to with that class of GPU. And if it has better performance than a 3090 Ti, like people say, why does it get crushed when you bring in the VRAM? People are not really noticing that, but that's a huge problem. This 3090 that's older and technically supposed to be inferior to the 4070 Ti is much, much smoother, and this completely proves it. So DLSS on quality. Now you get close to 60 frames. Very, very playable. The VRAM's not even an issue anymore, but look at this, super smooth. It's even playing better than the 4070 Ti with DLSS. Even though the 4070 Ti was getting technically higher frames, they were not smooth because of that VRAM limitation. Let's see if we turn DLSS 3 on, which is the only way you'd be able to really play this. Of course, frame generation, quality, let's see what happens. Now, much more playable at least, heading up over you're still getting these drops but kind of going over 60 70 frames per second look at that i just put it up to 4k and the gpu really really struggles at 4k with cyberpunk this is without the lss i mean look at the ram allocation it's over 12 gigs allocation and even the actual usage is close to 12 gigs so 11,573 i saw the highest Frames per second wise, you're getting, you know, in the 30s, dipping down to 20. But as you can see, it's very, very choppy, not very playable at all. The frames per second performance feels worse than it actually is. It just, it just feels like it's much choppier. Look at that VRAM though. It's almost running up against that limit. And I'm sure now that 192 bit memory bus, this is when it's really starting to tax it. Obviously, if we turn on DLSS 3, let's see if we get a good playable experience. We're gonna put it on quality. So we don't jump to quite 60. Ooh, but look at these stutters. A lot of freezing, little micro stutters everywhere. We're staying above 50, but still under 60 FPS. The uh, VRAM allocation and usage has gone down under 11, but it's not very smooth at all. We're getting a lot of these little micro stutters. These guys see that? It just kind of like jumped around and the VRAM uh, allocation jumped up. So maybe it's searching for more VRAM, maybe even with DLSS 3 at 4K. Look, this is not a smooth experience at all. You see all the stuttering and freezing? So this is at 4K on the 3090 with ray tracing ultra, no DLSS. Let's see how it does. Now the FPS is of course dipping around 20 frames per second, but it's not choppy like the 4070 Ti was. It's staying consistent. Look at the VRAM allocation, over 13,000. The actual VRAM usage, almost 12,000. This absolutely stopped the 4070 Ti in its tracks. The FPS is not high, but it's fairly smooth at this FPS. It's not giving those crazy stutters that the 4070 Ti was. That, I believe, is because of first, the VRAM amount is better on the 3090, 24 gigabytes, and the bandwidth is much faster. It's not limited to 192-bit bus like the 4070 Ti. So Hogwarts proved it, this game proves it. I mean, these are the games that are gonna really push these GPUs. You can call them optimized or not, they're pretty similar when you're comparing the same type of setup with the GPUs. The 3090 is just playing better without any type of DLSS than the 4070 Ti. Now, if we turn on DLSS on the 3090, let's see, let's put it on quality and ray tracing ultra. Of course, this isn't gonna have frame generation because that's gonna be available only to the um, 40 series GPUs. Now we're over, you know, 38, 39 frames per second, but it looks super smooth. Even though the frame rate is low, you probably would have to turn down a few other settings. We're not getting those stutters like we did on the 4070 Ti. So that once again proves that the RAM limitation is a serious problem. Even if the game you play isn't running into it now, that GPU is not future proof at all. And it's basically obsolete for anything aside, you know, 1440p when it comes to ray tracing and things like that. So at 1440p, 
let's see, we're getting around 47 frames per second. VRAM usage still, or below 10 gigabytes, I should say. Still feels pretty smooth overall, even though the frame rate isn't particularly high. And then you get considerably more frames per second. Now we're at 125. So if anything, DLSS 3 actually makes a huge difference. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video. And in this case, it would definitely smoke any RTX 3000 GPU at 1440p and the LSS3. Look at that, I just put it up to 4K and the GPU really, really struggles at 4K. All right guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.